Welcome back. I am Dr. Trish Varner. If you are new here, I share content about discovery, life, and inspiration with a large focus on ancestry-related stories. Check out my playlist as I have several interesting topics and stories out there. If you're interested in those things, consider subscribing and joining the Life with Dr. Trish family. We recently crossed the 6,000 subscribers line. Thank you so much to all of you who support this channel. I really do appreciate you. I have a goal to make it to 10,000 subscribers by my birthday, which happens to be in April. Today I want to share with you another great ancestry related story. I recently came across Georgina Lawton's memoir called Raceless. I have selected this book as the second book for our book club. The book is well written and provides a lot of insight about Georgina's life and societal issues such as race, family, acceptance, and a search for an identity. I will be interviewing Georgina later this month. So if you would like to join in on the discussion, make sure to get a copy of her book, Raceless. It is also available on Audible. I actually listened to it on Audible and it kept me engaged the whole time. I think you will enjoy it too. In today's video, I will be giving you the background about Georgina's story. Georgina Lawton is a young woman who was raised in the UK by two great parents. Her mother is Irish and grew up Catholic. Her father was English and came from a close-knit family. Her parents met as young adults and it was a perfect match. They obviously loved and were committed to one another. Their strong family backgrounds really helped prepare them to raise a family of their own. Her parents met while working at a hotel in London. They didn't hesitate to confess their devotion to one another and they decided to get married in 1990. They appeared to be a happy newlywed couple. Georgina was born in 1992. She was their firstborn and they adored her. Georgina was born with dark features and curly hair that contrasted a lot with her parents' looks, but her parents didn't talk about it much. In fact, Georgina's father never questioned the paternity and never brought up Georgina's unique looks to his wife. However, the midwife who assisted with the delivery perhaps felt the tension in the air and she explained Georgina's dark skin and curly hair as a throwback gene that most likely came from her mother's side of the family. She explained that in the 1500s, Spanish Armada sailors shipwrecked off Ireland and intermingled with the people in Ireland which resulted in darker skin tones in Ireland. I actually have seen a few comments about this, so I decided to do a little research on it. First, let's address the time frame. Georgina was born in 1992, over 400 years from the time the Spanish Armada sailors were said to have mixed with the Irish to result in darker skin tones. Could a throwback gene really have come from 400 years ago? Even if for 400 years, Georgina's mother's family appeared white? I know people like to think this sometimes, but is it really scientific? Let's think about some mixed race people we know. I grew up watching Victoria Roll on my mother's favorite soap opera, The Young and the Restless. Victoria is a daughter of an English mother and a Jamaican father. Most people don't have trouble recognizing her black ancestry. Victoria has a daughter, Maya Fahi, with her ex-husband, Tom Fahi. 
Although Maya is a quarter black, she appears white. Maya has a full black grandparent, a recent ancestor. It only took two generations to e erase signs of her African heritage. Paula Patton is another biracial actress. Her mother is white as well, and her father is black. Paula has a son with Robin Thicke. Paula's son appears white and has blonde hair, even though his grandfather is full black. Another example of it only taking a couple of generations to erase a racial identity. The point of this is it took far less than 400 years to erase signs of a darker skinned heritage. Do throwback genes exist though? Sure. I have a daughter with red hair, even though my husband, my parents, nor I have red hair. Red hair is caused by a recessive trait that both parents must carry and pass on to the child in order for the child to express that trait. In our case, my husband and I both carry the recessive hair trait that we inherited from our parents. My husband's father did have red hair, but it would not have been possible for us to have a red hair child unless I also carry the recessive trait. This is why you may not see recessive traits appear in families for generations. I have a couple of videos on how red hair is inherited if you're interested. I will link them above. Although I wasn't aware until I had my youngest daughter that I carried the recessive hair trait for red hair, I had seen red hair show up in my family in previous generations. I have two first cousins with red hair and my dad also had a first cousin with red hair. I was also told that other members of the family in previous generations had red hair. The same thing is true for my husband's family. Red hair was known to be present in previous generations. In Georgina's family, though, there was no mention of traits like Georgina's in previous generations. It seems improbable that a throwback gene would remain hidden for 400 years before appearing in a family. Nevertheless, I think it would be interesting to find out more about this possible throwback gene in Ireland. Let's see where the term Black Irish comes from. According to irishcentral.com, the term Black Irish is used to describe people of Irish origin who have dark features, black hair, a dark complexion, and dark eyes. However, this term is usually only used by Irish immigrants and their descendants but isn't used in Ireland itself. Over hundreds of years, people from many foreign cultures migrated to and settled in Ireland. This video isn't about that full history, so I'm not going to go into all those details. However, I think it would be good to highlight some of it. The Vikings started invading Ireland in 795 AD and were often referred to as dark invaders or black foreigners. However, that description may have reflected their intentions to invade the land, i.e. dark intentions, instead of reflecting the features of the invaders. The Normans from France were another group who were thought to have dark intentions. They went on to colonize the eastern part of Ireland. Many of the invaders from various groups changed their names to Gaelic names and considered themselves more Irish than the native Irish. Remember, this was over a thousand years ago. Then there were the Spanish sailors. According to the IrishStory.com, seven Spanish ships in the 1500s attempted to dock on the shores of Ireland to trade with the locals for food and water. However, they were resisted by Irish forces and English soldiers. Six of the ships were able to sail away, 
One ship was set afire and was looted by locals, which resulted in the loss of about 800 lives. 300 men, however, were able to get to shore, but were massacred by Irish forces and English soldiers. The Armada was a Spanish fleet created to transport the Spanish army across the English Channel. However, the fleet ended up along the western coast of Ireland in the late 1500s. 9,000 Spanish soldiers lost their lives off the Atlantic coast of Ireland. However, it is said that some Irish were sympathetic toward the surviving Spanish soldiers and sheltered them. These surviving Spanish soldiers supposedly married into Irish society and were said to create a new class of Irish who were known for their dark hair and complexion. However, according to irishcentral.com, there is little evidence to support this, and it is unlikely that a significant number of Spanish soldiers would have survived the invasion. irishcentral.com debunks the idea that the term Black Irish came from the Spanish invasion, as only a few dozen of the soldiers would have survived and most of them were captured and some were handed over to the British authorities. I will leave a link in the description box if you would like to read more about the theories of where the term Black Irish came from, as it is quite interesting. However, for this video, I mainly wanted to take a look at the Spanish Armada theory since it connects with the story about Georgina and her family. Considering what we know about recessive or throwback genes and the recorded history of the Spanish Armada, it seems unlikely that two white parents with Irish and English ancestry would have a biological daughter with features like Georgina's. Besides, Georgina didn't just have dark features, she had African-looking features. Her hair was tightly curled and her skin was copper-colored. As she grew and matured, Georgina even described the shape of her body as different. She had a shape that many African-American girls can relate to. Her looks were drastically different from her family's, even from her own mother's. Georgina had questions, but her parents refused to address any of them. As Georgina got older and went to school, people in the community started having questions too. Her dad's friend noticed how Georgina resembled his own biracial daughters and tried to ask Georgina's father about it, but her father refused to discuss the issue. Georgina would ask her mother about her differences and her mother would ensure her that she was white. Georgina had heard about the Spanish throwback gene theory all her life, but the older she got, the more it did not make sense to her. Those closest to her, mainly her close family and extended family, seemed to accept it as fact though. They really loved Georgina, and perhaps that was enough for them to overlook what seemed obvious to those on the outside looking in. When Georgina was in school, she had a teacher who was overly inquisitive about Georgina's situation. The teacher couldn't understand why Georgina was listed as white when she obviously, according to her, was something other than white. The teacher asked Georgina about it in front of the entire class. Georgina was not able to give her any answers other than what her family had told her. She was left feeling alone, confused, and frustrated. She wanted answers, so she decided to take it upon herself to get them. She bought a DNA test and asked her father if he would agree to take the test. Her father assured Georgina that he believed that she was indeed his daughter, but he did agree to take the test. However, due to her father's health issues, she decided to postpone sending the test samples off. It wasn't until after Georgina's father passed away that Georgina learned the truth. The DNA results show there was 0% probability that the man who had raised her and loved her 
was her biological father. She was devastated. Even still, she didn't get the answers she sought from her mother. Georgina Lawton's memoir, Raceless in Search of Family, Identity, and the Truth About Where I Belong, is a great book to read to understand the complexities of race, identity, and culture when one appears as black but has been raised as white. If you are interested in hearing Georgina's full story, I highly recommend getting a copy of her book or download it on Audible as I did. You will not be disappointed. Georgina eventually took several ancestry-related DNA tests and discovered that she is 43% Nigerian. Her book goes into full and open detail about her journey after discovering the truth, including a detailed look into the relationship with her mother after the discovery. As I have mentioned, I have chosen Raceless as this month's book club selection. I will be interviewing Georgina later this month to discuss her story and the topics she addresses in her book. If you are interested in having a conversation about this story and the issues it addresses, go ahead and get your copy of the book today. Like I said, I downloaded it from Audible, but it is also available on Amazon. I look forward to the interview with Georgina and engaging in a conversation with you about the topics Georgina addresses. Y'all, family secrets can be devastating to the family. I know a lot of families hold on to the secrets because they think withholding the truth will somehow protect their families and themselves. However, I have never seen that to be the case. Sure, we know that some people take their secrets to the grave, but there is something about truth that will eventually find its way to the surface. The things we do in our lives don't just impact us. They impact people we are connected to and even those who come after us. I know sometimes it can be difficult to admit to the truth as sometimes there may be shame associated with it. Perhaps you think you will disappoint someone. Perhaps you worry that someone will be hurt. All of these things may very well happen but a lie will not bring healing. A lie is not designed to bring wholeness. Only the truth can do that, as well as work to repair the damage. If you are familiar with my family's ancestry journey, you will know that we have been on the search to uncover the truth about my husband's ancestry. We don't know who my husband's biological paternal grandfather is, and it has left a gap in the family tree. My husband learned he has significant European ancestry, which made us question even more the light skin and red hair of his father and our own daughter's inheritance of red hair. Even though my husband's grandmother passed away several years ago, taking with her the secret about the family, there is still a longing to uncover the truth. That is what happens when you allow your descendants to inherit a lie. It leaves them questioning their identity and their history. Surely, if a parent fully understood the ramifications of those actions upon their descendants, they would have chosen to make better decisions. Our story can never be our own when we have children, grandchildren, so on. And every person has a right to understand their full identity. In my opinion, willfully withholding this information is an assault upon your very inheritance, your descendants. We hope to uncover more about our family's history soon. In the meantime, make sure to check out our Family Ancestry playlist to get the full backstory. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting. Also, if you want to be notified of when I interview Georgina Lawton about her story, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. I have many great ancestry related stories out there already, and I encourage you to check out my story life playlist.
I also have other playlists as well that you might find interesting. Thanks again for watching and I will see you again soon.